Here it goes. Close. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Synchronized. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. so that's the fun thing about fishing live bait is you never do know what the heck you're going to catch. Something about watching a bobber. Feels pretty good, man. It looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's a nice one there. That one, isn't it? There's one. Is that a good one? I think maybe. Probably might be a bass. If it's a crappie, it's a nice crappie, I think. Could be a bass, though, too. In the spring, you always, yeah, it is. It is a black crappie. See, look at that. He's actually, there looks like they're starting to spawn. It's spring right now, and that's a, I'm guessing that's a male. See how he's getting real dark on the belly? That's a good indicator of the uh, spawn either in progress or soon, soon to happen. So, it's got pretty colors on it. Yep. Let him go. This is probably one of the most easy presentations there is on planet Earth. And what that is, is a bear hook. It's really hard to beat a bear hook in meat this time of year. There's a, there's a lot of different ways you can catch crappies, but this is a really good way. Hang a minnow on there. Got a cork with about three, three foot of line. And you let it soak. And he mentioned, he mentioned minnows. Um, you know, when you go to the store and get those minnows, the worst thing you can do for any sort of private body of water is dump those like you dump your unused minnows back in the water when you're done at the end of the day. Do not do that. Dump them on the bank, give them to somebody, whatever. That's a good way to ruin a pond, and that's one of the reasons I rarely fish this, uh, fish this way. But it was just too, it's too tempting, man. We've been seeing them bust every night, haven't we? Yep. They've been everywhere. So but yeah, don't don't dump your don't dump your unused minnows in the pond. A lot of times when you find spawning grounds for crappies, there's going to be a, generally a lot of them. Where bass up in northern Minnesota, you'll find an area where they're spawning. It might be a quarter mile stretch of shoreline, but they're just going to be one here, one there, one here, one there because they don't they don't colonize, I feel like that like panfish do. They're a little more isolated. They like to keep crappies and sunfish out of their beds. So they're a little more isolated spawners than, than panfish. Oh, dude. <laughs> that is a tank. We gotta get him in the boat. Oh, come here, baby. You gotta don't dump him, don't dump him. Oh. Holy smoke. Holy cow, there we go. Oh, the hook came right out of there. That's a good Look one. Look at that. <laughs> that's, a, that's fun. Look at the mouth on that. Look at the eyes on that sucker. Oh, beautiful. That's a nice crappie. <laughs> All right, so while Kyle catches these fish, or this fish, um, I actually talked to a biologist this weekend. Uh, I think he's the head fisheries biologist at University of Florida. And we talked a lot about managing smaller bodies of water because that's one of my passions. And he said that if they're not kept in check, he said crappy can really ruin a pond. And my personal opinion on that or belief, managing this body of water for as long as I have, I think that, uh, I think that once a crappy gets to be you know, what would you say, 10 inches, 12 inches, yeah. Kyle? Yeah. Once they get to be about that big, I consider them a threat to the bass population because they will, uh, that just creates competition. 
and uh, it makes it harder for big bass to grow because we were talking earlier man there's so many crappie in this lake but our bass lately have been the last couple of years it seems like they're kind of stunted at you know six pounds maybe seven pounds there's a bunch of them in here but you used to come out here and catch giants and now they're turned into five and six pounders and i think the crappie have a lot to do with that um and when we put them in the box we'll give them to the landowners um give them to neighbors eat them ourselves um and we don't waste a single bit of meat on them we there you go they are awesome to eat and we sure are thankful for everyone we catch and harvest you want me up here or down there or you can there? stand i like you standing right up here next to me okay we'll share the experience together yeah this is a this is a dark one. We're, and we're, we'll keep a few, um, you know, we're not experts by any means, but by taking a few, we took a few bigger ones, a few smaller ones. We're just taking a wide range of them because we're, I mean, we, we are by no means experts yeah. at managing bodies of water but talk to a we, biologist before you take any of my advice it's just every every body of water is different keep that in mind yep and by by um i i feel like if we just take a, a number of fish out of the out of this pond that are of all size ranges we're not taking all great big ones we're not taking all small little ones we're just taking some out and by doing that Hopefully, you know, you can you can manage a body of water a little more efficiently, effectively. Because you have a finite population of bait fish, you know what I mean, Kyle? I mean, of forage. You gotta you gotta take out enough game fish to so everything can get its fair share. Right. These are nice crappie sticks. These are pretty, just for good, they're just good corking rods. Yeah. I went out and got me some. Sea Lock told me, that's a good one. That's a nice one. Sea Lock told me a lot about them. They're those Lou's Pro Series, the Wally Marshall ones. Yeah. They're a good price point. Yeah. For a corking rod, that's you right. don't need anything fancy. That's right. But this is just real simple. That high vis four pound test, really nothing, nothing fancy. Oh, there we go, they got a bite. There he is. You kind of want that, you kind of want that long parabolic rod too. The crappies have such a paper mouth that it's pretty easy to pull hooks out of them. So to have that nice bull whip type rod definitely helps. They're always shaking their heads, you know? helps them keep buttoned up a little bit better. Ta-da! If you're using an electric trolling motor or a breeze to your advantage to move in the baits around, drifting around, one of the ways is you can hook them in the, in the front, hook them right through the head. That way they drag nice and natural. Otherwise, if you hook them in the back like this and you drag them, they'll want to fold on you if you're going at any at any speed. But right now we're just kind of uh, using the trolling motor to counteract the breeze. And I like hooking them so they're perfectly horizontal, sitting right in the back hook them right through the back. I feel that's one of the most natural, most lively ways they'll they'll look to a crappie. All right guys, well that kind of sums it up. We're gonna bring these home, have a little sandwich. Tacos. So get out in the spring, soak some, soak some corks and you can have some fish like this. So that kind of wraps up this little outing. 
I, I would like to do it again. Maybe you can come up to Minnesota sometime and we can do this. As long as the water's not hard, <laughs> I'll be there. That's fun. Yep. Y'all try. Beautiful fish. Look how dark that one is and how clear this one is. That's cool. That's real neat. Gorgeous fish. Mm -hmm.